Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. And whether you're here as a nursing student, preparing for the NCLEX, or getting ready for nurse practitioner school, I hope this series will help you. These videos will cover nearly the entire nursing pharmacology curriculum. You can download all of the notes that are used in this lecture for free, and it is recommend, recommended that you print them, follow along, and your own notes as we go on. In this lecture, we're gonna be talking about drugs that affect the cholinergic receptors. So let's begin with a little bit of pathophysiology to understand what we're getting into. The parasympathetic system is also known as the rest and digest system. This stands in contrast to the sympathetic system or fight or flight. The primary receptors for this system, for the parasympathetic system, are the cholinergic receptors. And there's two uh, kinds, there's nicotinic and muscarinic. The primary neurotransmitter here is acetylcholine. Now I wanna be clear on some terminology that you may see on the exams that you may be taking. First of all, if I tell you that I want to give you a drug that activates sympathetic system, or if I give you a drug that I want to activate rest and digest, or if I give you a drug that activates cholinergic receptors, or if I give you a drug that increases the effects of acetylcholine, all four of those are interchangeable, relatively speaking. They're interchangeable terms. So any of them are fair game for a test. Make sure you're able to understand a question no matter what way it's put to you. Let's go ahead and understand a little bit about the effects of these drugs. When I activate muscarinic or cholinergic receptors, I get a constellation of effects known as sludge BBB. And that's an acronym. And what it stands for is salivation, extra saliva, lacrimation, tearing, urination, peeing, defecation, having a bowel movement, gastric emesis, which would be vomiting, and then BBB, which would be bronchorrhea, which is excess broncho bronchial secretions, bronchoconstriction, making the blood vessel, the bronchial smaller, and bradycardia, slowing down the heart rate. All of these together are known as sludge BBB, and these are the effects of activating cholinergic receptors. If I do the opposite, if I give you an anticholinergic effect, I'm gonna get the exact opposite. Now, anticholinergic effects are a really big class of drugs that we're gonna to get to in just a minute. Let's first go on and talk about this class of drugs that we have, and that is direct acting cholinergic agonists. The drug here is bethanacol. It's definitely not one of the most commonly used drugs, but you do see it around, and how does it work? It activates specific cholinergic receptors that cause bladder muscle relaxation. What is it used for? It's used for a neurogenic bladder causing urinary retention. It has an adverse effect causing tachycardia and hypotension. And it has a really long list of contraindications because this is a pretty sensitive system that it's dealing with when we talk about giving you a cholinergic agonist. Now let's look next at the drug class called anticholinergics. Before we do, since you're still here watching this lecture and hopefully enjoying it, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This content is all offered as a free resource for nursing students, nurses, nurse practitioners, and anyone else. And this channel is supported just by you clicking that subscribe button. So let's talk about anticholinergic agents. So anticholinergics are gonna be blocking the effects of cholinergic receptors or blocking the effects of acetylcholine or blocking the effects of the parasympathetic system. What's the last one? Blocking the effects of, of rest and digest. So let's go back and take a look. If I give you an anticholinergic agent, what would I expect? Well, salivation was for a cholinergic agent. So an anticholinergic agent, I would expect dry mouth. And this is critical, especially for test taking, that you understand that if I give you an anticholinergic drug, I'm gonna get the opposite of all these effects. So which of the following would I expect in a patient that received an anticholinergic? Dry mouth would be one of them. But this is next gen NCLEX. Let's take it a step further. Which of the following um, patient education points would be important for someone taking atropine? Atropine we're about to cover is an anticholinergic drug. So which of the following patient education points would be correct? Well, atropine is an anticholinergic drug. So it's gonna cause among other things, dry mouth. So what would be a proper education? It would be to expect to have a dry mouth or to 
increase something that'll help you sucking on a candy, something that will help with a dry mouth. Again, make sure you're ready for all those types of questions. So what would I get with anticholinergic drugs? I would get dry mouth, the opposite of salivation. I would get dry eyes, the opposite of lacrimation. I would get urinary retention. I would get constipation. Um, and I would get uh, bronchodilation. I would get drying up of bronchial secretions and I would have an increased heart rate. You must understand that whole list and please have it memorized which drugs are cholinergic effects and which drugs are anticholinergic and understand anticholinergic is gonna have the complete list opposite effects of that whole list of drugs. So anticholinergic drug class is massive and it's way too big for just this lecture. However, we're gonna go through a whole bunch of drugs that are anticholinergic and then we'll talk about one, the most prominent one, and then all the rest we're gonna talk about as we get to them as we go through our pharmacology series dealing with the different body systems. So the first one is gonna be atropine. That's probably the most powerful anticholinergic. It's used for bradycardia, organophosphate poisoning, and cholinergic toxicity. Benztropin is another one that's used for Parkinsonism and EPS, extrapyramidal symptoms. If you watched our lecture on mental health, that had a number of drugs that cause EPSs. Dicyclamine, which is dental, is used for IBS, hypotropium, and teotropium are both used for asthma and COPD. One of these is a rapid onset. One of these is a more long-term drug. Um, teotropium specifically is also sometimes called a LAMA, a long-acting muscarinic antagonist. Muscarinic is one of the cholinergic receptors. Antagonist is blocker. So anticholinergic is a muscarinic blocker. Okay, I want to be clear the drug class anticholinergic is really big and each of these drugs acts so differently in terms of what exactly they do, but all of them have the overlying effects that they're anticholinergic agents. Um, scopolamine is another one that's used for motion sickness, nausea, and some other things. Oxybutynin, and the next one, I'm probably going to butcher the name, so I'll go with the brand name Detrol. Those are both used for OAB, overactive bladder. Um, and all of these are considered anticholinergics. All of them you would expect, unless you know any better, unless you learned that drug very, very detailed, all of these you would expect to have something, some uh, combination of the anticholinergic effects that we discussed. The mechanism of action, again, these are cholinergic receptor antagonists. Remember, inhibit antagonists are blocked. For our purposes in pharmacology, are all the same thing. They're going to inhibit a cholinergic response. These are cholinergic antagonists. These are going to block cholinergic receptors. What exactly do they do? Depends on the specific medication. Again, for all of these drugs, you should be ready on a test to understand not only that they're going to do the opposite of sludge BBB, but you have to be ready for patient education questions about those opposite effects, as well as patient assessment questions. If I give a patient anticholinergic, well, I'm going to assess their heart rate and their breathing prior to giving it. Why? Because it impacts both the heart rate and the breathing. So our prototype anticholinergic drug is going to be atropine. And how does that work? That blocks the cholinergic effects, that blocks sympathetic effects, and it acts specifically on the muscarinic receptors. What is it used for? It's used for, as we already said, bradycardia, organophosphate poisoning, cholinergic toxicity, it's also used in the OR, and I definitely wouldn't expect you to see this on any test, but it's also used in the OR pre-op to reduce a patient's secretions during surgery. The adverse effects are going to be the full spectrum of anticholinergic effects because this is a really powerful agent. So you would expect constipation, you would expect urinary retention, dry eyes, dry mouth, and so on. Remember for each of these, again, get ready for patient education questions as well. If a patient person overdoses on atropine, if they become too much anticholinergic, then we give them a cholinergic drug. And in that case, we give them physostigmine, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Atropine is given parenterally only. And this drug, while it is more used more for bradycardia than anything else, it is not gonna be as effective in bradycardia that's related to heart blocks and heart transplant patients. And that's because of the way it works specific for bradycardia doesn't work in patients that have heart blocks or patients that have heart transplants, it won't have any effect. I would know those two bits of information. Next drug class we're looking at, we moved on from anticholinergic, we have acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So let's break it down in just the name before we even move on. Acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter of the cholinergic system. If I give you a drug that promotes acetylcholine, I will get more 
parasympathetic response. I will get more rest and digest response. So in our body, we have acetylcholine and acetylcholine activates cholinergic, activates parasympathetic. Acetylcholine esterase gets rid of acetylcholine. It ends in ASE, so it's an enzyme. Acetylcholine esterase gets rid of acetylcholine. So if I get rid of acetylcholine, I decrease the effects of acetylcholine. So if I just have acetylcholine esterase, this enzyme in the body, if I give you a bunch of it, then I'm going to decrease my cholinergic effects because I'm going to decrease acetylcholine. But if you're not already confused, let's take it one step further. Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. So acetylcholine activates the cholinergic response. Acetylcholine esterase gets rid of acetylcholine. So it blocks the cholinergic response. And finally, acetylcholine esterase inhibitors block acetylcholine esterase, which preserves acetylcholine. One more time, acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, which is this drug class, it blocks the body from getting rid of acetylcholine. It blocks that enzyme, blocks acetylcholine esterase. So it blocks the body from getting rid of acetylcholine, thereby increasing the effects of acetylcholine, thereby increasing cholinergic effects. What are the drugs here? That is the nepazil, galantamine, ribostigmine, there's several others. How does it work? We just covered that one. So if you're not already confused, awesome. How does it work? It inhibits acetylcholine esterase from destroying acetylcholine. It stops the body from getting rid of acetylcholine, thereby increasing acetylcholine, thereby increasing the effects of acetylcholine. What is this used for? It's used for Alzheimer's disease or dementia of the Alzheimer's type. Another drug we did talk about in the last video, physostigmine is a drug in this class that is used for anticholinergic toxicity and also to reverse any issues we have with a non-depolarizing paralytic, which we are going to get to in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.